Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be based around a really simple banner that you can post into a info channel or for announcements. Now the idea behind this banner is it's not only simple to make, but also very simple to edit because all you need to do is just swap a few colors, swap the character, replace the text, and you're good to go. Now that sounds like a lot of steps, but it will take you less than a minute to get all of that done or even 30 seconds if you're comfortable with it. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. We're going to start off by going to File, New, and we want the width to be at 1200 and the height to be at 530. Then click Create. Now we can go ahead and create a new layer by clicking this little plus button down here and click delete on the backgrounds and the color we're going to be using to start off is F877A2. Click OK. Go over to your rounded rectangle tool. Now it doesn't really matter because either the rectangle tool or the rounded rectangle tool are going to work because both allow you to round the edges. I'm just going to click rounded for simplicity. I'm going to go ahead and drag down. Now it doesn't matter what size it is right now because we're going to come over here to this right side, properties, to adjust it. Now if you don't have the properties window, just go to window and come down to properties and check that. It will pop up and you can drag it over to this right side or leave it right here which is where it's going to pop up at. So we're going to swap the width and we're going to make that 1140. Click enter. And the height, we're going to make that about 295. Click enter. Now we don't want a stroke. We want the fill. So click that. And then for the corners, we want about a 31, 30 pixel curve on those edges. So go, hold, go ahead and hold shift as you drag it to center it. Let's move it up a tad. And there we go. We have our initial shape ready to go. We can go ahead and call this the base layer. Control G, we'll call this the main section. And we can go ahead and make this say red. Next step is there's actually several different steps you can take instead of this one, but I figure it will be more efficient to do it this way. I'm gonna do Control J. Then I'm gonna go on to rasterize layer I'm going to do control click right on this thumbnail where you can see the little square popped up right below the clicker. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to go to go to select, modify, contract, and about eight pixels. Hit OK. Then I'm going to go over to your rectangular marquee tool, right click, select inverse, and then control J. Then you can delete that and we'll call this the trim. Great, and so for the trim, we're gonna wanna have that at a different color than everything else. Blending options, color overlay. And the way I picked this color is I took my initial pink and I just made it a tad darker. Now I assume you aren't gonna wanna have all your banners as pink, maybe blue, green, etc. So what I like to do for this style is I'll have this main area, the lighter shade, and then this darker, this trim, be a darker shade just so we can see some contrast between the two. I'm going to click OK, OK, and I'll leave the color overlay on there. There's no reason to rasterize it because if I ever want to come back in the future and swap colors, I can easily do so. I can go to properties, make that blue, or I can go to trim, blending options, and swap the color. It's really quick and easy to do. Now when it comes to this base layer, and we're going to make a few adjustments to it now. So right click, blending options. All right, so we're going to go into the stroke at seven pixels and the color we want is just regular white, all Fs, hit OK. The next one we're going to want is going to be the pattern overlay. And this one is also set correctly already. So you're going to want this pattern and I'm going to have a link for that in the description so you can download it. Make sure you have Photoshop open and just double click the file that's within it 
and then you can open it up and it's automatically going to load into Photoshop. So whenever you open a new file, it's going to be ready for you to go. Opacity 13, scale to 26, and the blend mode overlay. So click OK. Now we can go ahead and hide that. Go to our dot pattern, drag that over, do Control T. Go over here, make sure that it's clicked so the two, both the width and the height change to the same values. And we're gonna make this 75%. Click OK, blending options, color overlay. And we'll make this white. Hit OK, hit OK. Opacity at about 30%. Check that. Drag it over, make sure it looks correct. Perfect. So copy layer style, clear layer style. Do Control J, then drag it over while holding Shift. As you can see, it lines up perfectly. Right click, merge down, name this dots, right click, paste layer style, hide that, right click, and can either do create clipping mask there, or you can hold all and click in between. A lot of steps, but I vocalized every single button you need to click, so feel free to go back and slow it down or pause as necessary. As long as you follow everything I mentioned, then you get through all of it without any issues. Next step is we can go ahead and get our text layer out the way. So do Control G, name this the text, right click, make that yellow, go to your text tool, horizontal type, we're going to be using new comic BD at 216 font size, and go ahead and click, let's put down events, great. We can stick that right there. Control T, let's adjust it a tad. Perfect. Let's go into blending options. We're gonna go to stroke first. And for the stroke, we're gonna want five pixels for the size. After that, we're gonna go into drop shadow. And here, we're gonna want 32, 52, 17, zero, and then Great. Now, once we get to the end of the video, I'll go over some additional steps you can take to make this design a bit more detailed and complex. But the initial design itself is great for if you're still new to Photoshop and you're trying things out. And for the next step, I ask that you please hit the like button and the subscribe button to appease the merciless YouTube overlords. All right, after that, we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna do Control G. This layer, we're gonna call, or sorry, this group, we're gonna call the cross strip. Then we're gonna go over to our shape tool, regular rectangle, and the color we're gonna be using is as follows. E3, E2, E3. Two. Hit OK, and let's just drag it down, doesn't matter the size, because we're going to come over here and adjust it. First off, we don't want to stroke, we want to be using that color right there. For the width, we want about 66 pixels, and then for the height, we want about 358. Great. Now make sure this is centered, like so. You see the guiding line pop up, letting you know that it is now centered. Now, just do Control J. This one, we're gonna be using that pink color and we're gonna be adjusting it from here. Okay, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change the width to five pixels and then we're gonna to go to our Move tool and we're gonna click the right arrow key five times. One, two, three, four, five. Great, we're gonna do Control J. We're gonna move that over we're going to do the same thing with the arrow key, one, two, three, four, five. Go ahead and merge these shapes, and we'll call these the lines. Now the reason I'm not going to rasterize it is because we can come to the property still, and we can swap this pink to something else whenever you change the color scheme in the future. So we can go ahead and take this and create a backup just in case. Let's call this the strip backup. We can make this 
down there, control G, make this gray, and we'll call this the backups. Just in case something goes wrong, we have that there to return to. Now with that, we can go ahead and do control T, and we're gonna angle this at six degrees. There we go, then hit the check mark, make sure everything is still centered, just like so. Then grab your pen tool, come over and make a new layer, click at the top, hold shift as you click down to make sure it's a perfect 45 degree angle, hold shift again, come up, go across, and you don't need to hold shift for these two. Then we're gonna do a right click, make selection, okay, shift F5, and we're gonna be using the following color, E2, E5, E2, hit OK, hit OK, then deselect, drag that below, and we'll call this the top. Okay, and then we're gonna come down here and do a similar thing, create a new layer, click on the edge, hold shift as you move down, hold shift as you move across, then come up, make selection, okay, shift F5, okay, right click and deselect. Name this the bottom. We'll call, we'll group these by selecting them and doing control G. And we'll call this the edges. I'm going to go into each one. We're going to go into blending options. We're going to go to inner shadow. We're going to do a 17. Uncheck global light. Put this at negative 22. This one at 3, 0 and four, hit okay, looks great. Copy layer style, paste layer style, perfect. Now we're gonna do a control J, we're going to merge group. This rectangle, same thing, control J, bring it down, merge down, and then from here, we're gonna take the top, just like so, make sure you don't go below the white line, control J. Now, as you can see, this one is its own separate piece, and you'll see why in just a moment. We're going to come to the bottom and do the same thing. Control J. We can delete this one now. We can merge this one down or right click and merge layers. We'll call this the white border. And you can probably see what I was getting at now. Right click, blending options, stroke seven pixels and now the stroke extends all the way around and it looks as if this is all one piece and the seven pixels at the bottom lines up perfectly with this and the seven pixels everywhere else lines up perfectly with the seven pixel stroke on the rest of the banner now for the final two steps we're going to come to our rectangle go into the blending options we're going to add a drop shadow Gonna have this at 22, 2, 4, and then 5. And now it goes off slightly to the left, and you can tinker with that a bit if that isn't what you're what you like. Then we're gonna drop our character in. Let's hide that real quick. Hide that, go to our main section. We're gonna go over to our character, do control T, flip the width, hit OK, make sure the character is clipped on, model, control T, and resize the character until they fit appropriately, and that's good, and if they ever come off the edge, just chop that off to give it the appearance of the character stopping right on this edge here. And if we actually want more space for the character to have on this left side, we can just take this cross strip and drag it over. It's pretty simple, just like so. Now for our character, we're gonna go blending options, add a drop shadow of 36 here, eight, oops, 39, zero, and five. And that's it for this banner. Let me show you how to save real quick, and I'll go over a few tips on how to make this even better 
if you want to add a few extra steps. So go to the rectangular marquee tool, select all of it, edit, copy merged, file, new, create, control V. And now the whole thing is sized to your actual banner. And from here, you can either do file, save as, or file, export, save for web. And here, make sure you do PNG 24. And the save for web just makes the file size a bit smaller, so it's quicker to upload and it's an overall smaller file size. For this, the few changes I would make is I might add some more detail to the backgrounds. For the text itself, I might add some gradients and maybe a low poly overlay on top of it. Character model, you can experiment with leaving it inside or having them come out the frame. And for this actual strip itself, you could try different styles for it, different colors, or even some overlays for textures on top of that. Now that marks the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I have another video popping up on screen to another tutorial that's similar to this one, but it's a bit more complicated.